vegetables, oh, no mushrooms, no celery, no cucumber, cactus, avocado, all beans, eggplant, broccoli, bean sprout, parsley, lettuce, cabbage, and peas. No beans, lettuce. are set. Hello, welcome back to my channel, Vi Air. Today I'm going to talk about my crazy diet. It's called the Constitution Diet. I'm totally obsessed with it. Why? Because do you ever have like eh days and then really good days? Well, on this diet, there is no such thing as eh days. You feel amazing and maybe that's why it's so strict. A quick disclaimer before we get started. The Constitution Diet is not one set of diet for everyone. Rather, there are eight constitutions, so I'm gonna be specializing on the constitution that I belong to. I made an outline for this video. Hopefully I don't bore you. It's just I could literally talk about this diet for hours and hours, so I won't be going too in depth, but I will try my very best to not leave out any important information that you might possibly need. Uh, for the outline, I will briefly talk about the history of this diet. Then we'll move on to what I can and cannot eat. Then other lifestyle changes that I've had to do while being on this diet, what I've learned from being on this diet. And lastly, what can you do to incorporate now into your diet? Brief history. So this diet is actually very ancient. We say it started in the 1900s, but we've actually seen documentation that they used it far more beyond that. The only difference was they thought that there were only four constitutions before, and then later on discovered that there's actually eight, which is why we kind of give the time frame of this diet beginning in the early 1900s. I want you guys to think of a straight line. So now you're gonna have two vegetarians at the end, two carnivores at the other end, four omnivores in the middle. Quick disclaimer, carnivores does not mean they can only eat meat. We will get into it, I promise. Now, I feel like this is why vegetarians, um, when they make this change, they just start promoting like that everyone should make this change because they feel so amazing on it. And I completely understand it. The only thing is my constitution, I can't live off of a vegetarian diet. So I promote that everyone should find their correct constitution so that they too can feel amazing and I promise that is exactly the results you're gonna get. Now let's talk about why isn't this diet popular and the reason is because there's no scientific test and finding the test is very difficult. I went to go see Dr. Kim, his title, he's a constitution acupuncture doctor and he has to do three tests to find my diet. So the first test is called the constitution test and they actually take your pulse so that they could then put you into an animal food group. Then he's gonna do muscle testing so that he can kind of test your strength and weaknesses. This involved like testing the difference from pH leveled water versus acidic water, agave versus honey, vitamin B versus vitamin E. And the last test that he does is the actual acupuncture um, that helps you with all the symptoms that you're feeling and all your health problems. Let's talk about why he puts you into a food group and the way that they always almost describe this to you is they give you a vet example. So if you were to take your sick pet to the vet and you just start telling them all the symptoms, but you don't specify if your pet is a dog or a fish, the vet won't be able to cure your pet. Look at wild animals. Wild animals such as like a lion, they don't get sickness such as cancer because they eat what their body is meant to eat, which is meat. A carnivore is a carnivore because they have a long, small intestine and a short colon. My doctor is saying if you were to open up a human, like perform an autopsy on someone that came out to be a carnivore, you would see that he'd have a longer small intestine compared to other constitutions and a short colon. These are the eight constitutions. I'm definitely going to butcher the name, so I apologize in advance. Pulmotonia, born with a strong lung and a weak liver. Colonotonia, born with a hyperactive large intestine and a weak gallbladder. Hepatonia, born with a strong liver and a weak lung. Cholestonia, born with a weak large intestine and a hyperactive gallbladder. Pancreatonia, born with an extremely hyperactive pancreas and a weak kidney. Gastrotonia, born with a strong stomach and a weak bladder. Renatonia, born with a strong kidney and a weak pancreas. I'm a vesicatonia, meaning I was born with a weak stomach and a very strong bladder. What I cannot eat, I'm actually just gonna name you guys off this list. I don't know if you guys can see it, we'll check out later. But what I cannot eat, starting with the meats, I can't have any pork and no egg whites. Grains, I can't have wheat, barley, oats, 
buckwheat rye. Seafood, I can't have any shelled fish. Vegetables, oh, no mushrooms, no celery, no cucumber, cactus, avocado, all beans, eggplant, broccoli, bean sprout, parsley, lettuce, cabbage, and peas. Fruits, this one was the hardest. I can't have anything from the berries family. No melon, pineapple, banana, papaya, cherry, grapes, plum, persimmon, I don't even know what persimmon is, pear, peach, kiwi, watermelon, dragon fruit, coconut. Others, can't have black tea, coffee, beer, mint, tea tree oil, peppermint oil, alkaline water, sun, sauna, eating late at night, presbyterian, black and blue colors, mercury, silver, jade, also no ice cream. Nutrition, I can't um, have any vitamin E, no fish oils, and no agave. Really quick, I said no ice, and that's because for my constitution, I can't have cold water. I should be having room temperature water as best as I can. It's better for my body. And supposedly, I'm supposed to be allergic to all these things. I say supposedly because I've actually never taken an allergy test because I have the worst health insurance, worst doctors. So I do want to take one in the future. I just I, so then this leads me to what the hell can I have? Meats, I can have anything from the cow products. I can have dairy, but if I want dairy, I have to have like whole milk. I can have poultry, so stuff like chicken and turkey. I can have lamb, I can have goat. Grains, I can have white rice, I can have brown rice, I can have quinoa, and I can have corn. Seafood, I can have any type of fish that just isn't shelled fish, so stuff like tilapia, salmon, uh, yellowtail, that type of stuff, so I can still have sushi, just have to work my way around it. For vegetables, I can have spinach, I can have potato, I can have bell pepper, zucchini, asparagus, and carrots. Fruits, this one's kind of the saddest one. I could really only have five fruits and they're citrus fruits. So I can have mangoes, I can have apples, oranges, grapefruit, tomato, and then lemons, limes. For the others, so I can have non-caffeinated tea. So stuff like lavender, chamomile. If I want nuts, I can only have pine nuts and cashew nuts. I can have cinnamon. I need the room temperature water. Uh, my diet follows the acidic water. And then this is kind of funny, but if I guess I shouldn't be drinking alcohol for this diet specifically, but if I wanted to, I would have to do a vodka that's made out of potato or rice, or I could have whiskey. Nutrition, I can have vitamin B, a very good for me, and then the other vitamins, so vitamin A, vitamin C, and vitamin D, and I can have honey. Now, anything that I didn't mention probably meant that I could have these foods in moderation. So here's just like a small list that I would ask Dr. Kim every time I would go back because they're like different fruits that we didn't really talk about. I can have guavas in moderation, pumpkin, sunflower seeds, arugula, kale, cilantro, tofu, and ponzi sauce. There are a few exceptions. It's very bizarre, but I promise it works. I can have pork if it's very spicy. I could have egg if it has the egg yolk in it. Um, and then I could have peaches if they're in season. I could have avocado as long as it has lots of lemon in it. So something like guacamole totally works. Other lifestyle changes. So if you are a vesicatonia, you follow the acidic water. So the best water for you to drink is sparkling water. So I just kind of went ahead and invested in a sparkling water machine. They're actually not that expensive. I got mine off Amazon. I know there's other places that you could get yours. I should eat breakfast as soon as I wake up. Uh, no late night eating. So let's say if I'm gonna go to bed by 10, then I'll make sure that my last meal is at seven or else I don't wake up hungry and it doesn't set me up for success for my next day. Another thing is I should be eating small meals throughout the day. So I tend to eat every like two to three hours. And vesicatonias, they cannot process a lot of sugar, which is probably why so much fruit is taken out of this. So I just have to kind of watch my intake or else I start getting a lot of health problems again. If I'm gonna go take hot yoga or teach hot yoga, I make sure to take a cold shower after I practice. Uh, vesicatonias are very sensitive to the sun, so I wear sunscreen every time I leave the house. I almost always try to wear a hat. I already got accustomed to that before anyway. We need to drink room temperature water, so I actually don't use a hydro flask. It's rare that I use a hydro flask. I like bottled water better. This way, I just like the taste better and it keeps my water at a good temperature. I try to find facial and like just beauty products that match up to my diet. Well, almond oil is in so much facials and it makes your skin very soft. Off. but for me it does bring the softness but then it also makes does not help with my discoloring so yes it may help one problem but it will create um, another problem by using it so what I've learned let's talk about the why's why can I eat this stuff here are things that I documented symptoms that I found because you bet 
I tried to incorporate these um, food groups slowly into my diet again, seeing I was like, okay, maybe I'm just listening to this guy and it really isn't doing anything. Nope, that did not happen. My main health problem when I went to him is I was tired all the time. I was sleeping about 16 hours a day, yet I was exhausted throughout my day. And then I ended up finding out through like my doctors is when I was going to sleep at night, my brain wasn't shutting down. So it's almost as if I actually wasn't ever sleeping. So my body would go to sleep, but my mind wouldn't go to sleep. The biggest one that I completely take out and I never cheat on is wheat. I have the worst symptoms with wheat and I have the most. I get very tired, so as soon as I eat it, I feel like knocking out. I have very bad mood swings. I start to break out. I feel bloated. Then I get really bad stomach pains that are very unbearable. Um, I don't feel motivated when I, like the next day, if I'm trying to get out of bed, it takes me a good like hour, whereas normally my alarm rings and I get out of bed right away. And I do start to feel like depression throughout my day. I know there is no reason for me to be depressed, but I just feel very unmotivated. I feel like if I could just go to sleep and wake up three months later, I would totally do that. That's exactly how I feel. So I actually no longer use wheat because I don't want to have these feelings of sadness and it's just not fun. Uh, water. I notice that I'm just a lot more sluggish throughout my day. I can probably start to get headaches and I have more brain fog. I would say that's the biggest one is like the brain fog. Let's talk about sauna, that's not a food group. Um, I can't go into a sauna because my body overheats and I have baby glands. So then what happens is my tongue turns white and then my breath starts to s smell and I just get really tired. I will also go ahead and post all the foods I can and cannot eat as well as the symptoms I feel from other foods on my Facebook page. It's Eileen Amaris. I definitely cheat my diet all the time, but at least this way I know what I'm getting myself into. So for example, every time I go to teach or even take hot yoga, I will always take a cold shower right after if I can because prevent from like the smelly breath and all that from um, continuing. Let's say if I'm going to teach three classes that day, then maybe I'll take my cold shower at the end of the day. It probably will just cause me to have to take a longer cold shower or I'll have to take like two or three more cold showers to finally get rid of that symptom. I am very lucky to have sparkling water as part of my diet because if I eat something that doesn't make me feel good, then I just end up drinking it and because of all the bubbles it ends up making my stomach feel a lot better i think you guys noticed that i said no mint so i can't put on peppermint or i shouldn't be putting on peppermint oil on my body and actually i already kind of knew this one i noticed that peppermint oil made me tired now everyone markets peppermint oil as like to use when you're gonna like to focus to concentrate like when you're studying for a test or to give you energy so because it does the opposite to me if i because i love the smell of peppermint maybe sometimes at night i'll diffuse it when i'm gonna go to sleep because i can have acidic i can technically have soda also because i can have corn you have no idea how much corn syrup is on all like the junk food and all that stuff so i do have soda like quite often but again i have to kind of measure my intake because too much sugar um, messes up my ph level balances or to get all these other symptoms the most important part that i've learned through all of this was building a relationship with my body learning how to listen to my body what it's trying to communicate to me and all that shebang so then i started uh reading all the labels to the food one time i bought some pasta from trader joe's and i read the ingredients and the ingredients said that the pasta was made out of potato flour and rice flour so technically i should be able to have it but when i ate it i noticed that it made me very tired right after i gave it about like two or three chances after that and it just completely didn't work so for some reason like i should be able to have it but for some reason my body can't process it so i just completely took it out now in another example i have these sugar gluten-free cookies that i love but i'm technically not gluten-free because a lot of gluten-free like pastries or pastas they want to make it with like oat flour or chickpea flour almond flour coconut flour i can't have these flours now for these cookies they're made out of three flours potato flour rice flour i believe and oat flour so technically i shouldn't be able to have it because of the oat flour but honestly it doesn't make my stomach hurt so i do have it from time to time especially when i crave sweets since there aren't many sweets that i can't have on my diet the main reason that i'm obsessed with this diet is i never get sick 
I'm not kidding. I used to get sick about once a month. It was the worst. I was the type of person who would be the first to get the flu and then the last to get the flu. Now, everyone says that you build an intolerance after you get the flu. Yeah, that never happens to me. And the reason why uh, when you don't follow your diet, you're getting sick a lot is because your body is spending too much time processing food that it's not meant to process. So while this is happening, when a virus enters your body, your body is so busy on the food that it's not attacking the virus right when it comes. And that you have no idea how amazing it feels to go over a year without being sick. Just know that your body is always trying to protect you and you need to help it do that. What you can do. Okay, I have some bad news. Um, I can't tell you what constitution diet is. You can't take a test for it. So, I'm gonna leave Dr. Kim's information down below. I am Los Angeles based. He has two offices, one in Canyon Country, the other one in Beverly Hills. No, he does not accept insurance because any good doctor that I've ever gone to, they don't need insurance to attract their patient. If not, I would recommend to just start listening to your body. And the first one that I would do is actually the waters. I would go one week just drinking pH leveled waters. If you don't want to be spending money on all this plastic water bottles, which I wouldn't want to either, you could go get pH level drops on either Amazon or something like Sprouts and then just do a whole week with pH levels. And then the following week, I would try acidic water. So it's like sparkling water or like tap water and just notice then how you feel. And I just, I, for me, water really just matters for the type of flow that I have throughout my day. Am I having brain fog? Am, am I having just like quick days? So that's what I would start to notice. And then I would start to have a food journal. Now, I just want to be very clear that if you have a lot of health problems the way I did, this could be very difficult because I could actually go an entire day without eating not a single thing that was part of my diet. And this is actually what happened when I tried becoming vegetarian for like a week. I was just living off of wheat and berries and it actually made my symptoms worse. And I was like, what the heck is going on? When you start this food journal, the easiest um, symptom that you can see is bloating. Many times whenever something doesn't feel good, your stomach gets bloated, which is nice also, which is another nice thing about this diet is I'm never bloated. Here are a few questions that you can ask yourself if you start a food journal. I would notice if you feel tired after you eat. Because remember that food is actually supposed to give you energy and there are so many people who just get tired after they eat. In my family, it was just such a myth like, oh, you're tired because your body's busy digesting. Like that's normal and it actually isn't supposed to be normal. You can also try having the exact same meal that you're having, but having it at a, sm um, at a much smaller portion. That's why vesicotonias have to have small portions because we have weak stomachs so we can't just give it everything all at once. From there, you can notice if you feel bloated, if you do not. If it's difficult for you to wake up in the morning, it's most likely one of the last things that you ate at night. I uploaded a lot more questions you could ask yourself for your food journal on my Facebook page at It's Eileen Amaris. Lastly, if you are capable to do it, I definitely recommend getting an allergy test. I believe Viome.com gives these allergy tests are like $400, but they basically, um, they like send you a sample through mail and then you send it back and then your results will show like, for example, kale and I'll tell you like very allergic, high or moderate allergic. So it kind of tells you what your body, um, how your body can process it because it is kind of related to the constitution diet. But again, I've never taken an allergy test. Ah, oh, finally. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you have any questions, I will try my very best to answer them. Also, let me know if you guys want to hear like a more in-depth video on like the history or how which organs are connected to which constitution, how you can get started. I don't know. Any questions, let me know. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. But if you don't want to, then you totally do not have to. I'm addicted to health. I'm just addicted to how my body works. It does so much to me. And this is really what this channel is about. So if you want to follow my journey along, make sure to hit subscribe. Now, if you made it this far from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. Today, we awaken the inner responsiveness to our body, how we can learn how to listen to it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you next Friday at 5 p.m. Peace out.